Hello, and welcome to another product video breakdown from Nikkor Store. Today, we will be going over the Nikkor MH40S. Are you new to this channel? Consider subscribing and liking our videos for more Nikkor content. Nikkor's classic long handle, long throw flashlight. And here is everything that comes with the Nikkor MH40S. The flashlight itself. Inside are two NL2150 5000 mAh 2100 batteries, a QC 3.0 quick charge wall box, USB-C to A charging cable, the remote pressure switch, two Velcro straps, two Picatinny rail sections, and a heavy duty nylon holster. Now here is a side by side comparison of the previous generation's MH40 GTR and the latest MH40S. As you can see, the lines have been made simpler and smoother, whereas there were far more almost exaggerated heat sinks on the MH40 GTR and the handle was skinnier making it very front heavy because these took two 18650 batteries. The MH40S is far more even, simpler lines, the knurling is far more pronounced and enshrouds the entire length section of the handle portion, providing a very secure grip. Additionally, instead of the twist mechanic to change the brightness modes, the MH40S receives a much more easier to use side button. Additionally, the MH40S is USB-C rechargeable, whereas the 40 GTR was not. And now here are the dimensions of the Nikkor MH40S. It is 10.08 inches in length. The bezel diameter is 2.56 inches, and the grip diameter is exactly one inch. It weighs 8.67 ounces. The MH40S is equipped with a Lumen Engine G9 LED, with a smooth polished reflector and a double-sided scratch resistant coating lens. This gives it a 1,500 lumen max that is capable of reaching up to 1,640 yards. This is due to its impressive 570,000 candela rating, which far out surpasses the MH40 GTS in every regard. Here is the basic operation guide of the Nikkor MH40S. The tail switch is two-stage. You can hold it for momentary activation. It will deactivate when pressure is removed from the tail switch. Then it can be Click through for constant activation. You can click through the tail switch again to deactivate the flashlight. While the flashlight is activated, tapping the side button will cycle through your brightness modes. Starting from low at 18 lumen, mid at 50 lumen, high at 500 lumen, and turbo at 1500 lumen. While the flashlight is activated, holding the side button will activate your auxiliary modes. First strobe. Hold again for beacon, and then hold again for SOS. Tapping the side button will return you to your regular modes. The MH40S also comes with mode memory and will reactivate on the mode you most previously used. Here it is, on low, off low, on low. Switch to turbo, on turbo, off turbo, on turbo. Here is the operation guide of the RSW2I WL wireless remote pressure switch. If the flashlight has not been turned on in over 30 minutes, the remote will unpair itself with the flashlight in an effort to save battery. So first, activate the flashlight, and then deactivate the MH40S with the power button of the pressure switch to pair the flashlight, like so. And now, until 30 minutes of non-use expires, the flashlight and the pressure switch will stay paired. The power button of the remote pressure switch is similar to the tail switch of the flashlight. First, you can click all the way through to activate the MH40S. You can click all the way through again to deactivate the MH40S. When it is on, you can have to press the power button to cycle through the brightness modes. Like so. The large button on the pressure switch is your momentary activation. It can be held to activate the flashlight, and then released to deactivate the flashlight. In order to use your auxiliary modes, activate the flashlight and then hold the power switch. Now it'll enter strobe mode, and then you can have to press to switch to beacon, and then have to press again to switch to SOS. Now here are some of the ways you can install the RSW2IWL remote pressure switch to a rail section using the accessories included. First, the two Picatinny rail sections. First, orient the rail sections to where the octagonal bevel sections are aiming outwards to go in line with the pressure switch. Then, slide the tabs or ears into the Picatinny rail sections. 
Like so. These Picatinny rail sections are rather soft and pliable, so they will install fairly easily onto a rail section. Like so. Another method you can use to attach the RSW2I WL pressure switch is to use the small slits on the ears of the pressure switch and the two included hook and loop straps to attach it to other surfaces, for instance, such as this vertical grip. Prepare it like this, then find the surface you'd like to attach it to. Like so. And finally, the RSW2IWL pressure switch already comes with a hook and loop pad installed to the rear of the pressure pad and a section of the mating pad with the sticky end on the other side. This can be cut and shaped and attached to various surfaces on your platform so that you can then just stick the pressure switch wherever you'd like and easily pop it off to swap out the battery. I've already prepared a section on this vertical grip here. Like so. And of course, if you think the MH40S is too big or unwieldy to install onto a hunting platform or any other platform really, comes with this heavy duty, thick and durable nylon holster. With a secure, solid metal loop in the back, as well as a Velcro section that a belt could be threaded through. The MH40S comes with two NL2150 5000 mAh 21700 batteries. Here is how to charge the batteries inside the MH40S. On the opposite side of the side switch, there is a hidden USB-C port. Uncap the USB-C port to expose the plug. Use the included QC 3.0 wall box to fast charge all that 10,000 milliamp battery inside. After connecting the USB-C cable to the wall box, just plug it in. Then you will see the small LED indicator inside the side switch go from a series of blinks to a steady on when the batteries are fully charged. Replacing the battery of the RSW2IWL remote pressure switch is easy as well. Use any slim sharp object to get underneath the tab, or if you have long fingernails I suppose, to get underneath the tab and pop it open. It takes these small CR1632 lithium batteries, and these are good for 20,000 clicks on the RSW2IWL. And finally, the Nikkor MH40S is rated IP68 waterproof and is submersible up to 2 meters. It, it is fully submersible, although I, I don't have a bowl that is large enough, making it a ideal outdoor hunting, search and rescue, or just in general surveying flashlight that is all weather applicable. It is also made from durable, impact-resistant, aerograde aluminum, and that concludes the product video breakdown of the Nikkor MH40S, Nikkor's long-handle, slim, classic, long-throw flashlight capable of a 1,500 lumen max that can reach out up to 1,640 yards. Upgraded from the MH40S, MH40 GTS with a far more simpler, easier to use intuitive side switch, as well as fast USB-C recharging capabilities. And of course, there's also the included remote pressure switch, which hey, if you ever drop your flashlight in the water, you know you can safely turn it off. If you have enjoyed this video, or think I am a big dumb fart, please leave a comment or suggestion below. Of course, as a show of appreciation for our YouTube audience, save 10% on your entire order at Nikkor Store when you use the code U10 at checkout. To stay up to date on future product releases, sales announcements, and all things flashlight related, please consider subscribing to the Nikkor Store YouTube channel. And thank you.